Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Pursuit Podcast. Times fly by and we're closing in on the MLS Super Draft. And why not bring one of our own clients who actually ended up being drafted in for a talk? Yes, you are Rydstrand. You're from Uppsala in Sweden. Uh, currently, you're playing in Spain. Uh, yeah. Thank you for, for coming, stopping by for, for the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. We, um, we're going to focus a lot in this episode on... Uh, obviously, your your playing uh, career. You had a fantastic college experience uh, uh, at Creighton University in, in Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska is a state that you know it's not the typical state you think of. And I'm going to go to the US and, and play. Uh, but I th- so I think we should touch a little bit on on how that is and 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 maybe the differences there versus. Uh, uh, where you're from in a uh, bit north of mm-hmm. Stockholm in, in Sweden. Um, and, and, but let, let's dive straight into to why you chose to, to go to, to the US in the first place. Because you were playing, maybe you can talk a little bit about your background in, in Sweden and what you were doing uh, before you went. Absolutely. So uh, we, can take, we can take the year that kind of led up to, to the fact that I, that I left uh, Sweden for the US. Uh, which was 2014, and uh, I was I was contracted with uh, Eco Sirius, uh, which at that point was in was in second division in Sweden. And um, well, I didn't I didn't play at all. I didn't uh, register a single game in Superettan at that time. So um, it kind of led to already in the summer there, halfway in through the year, it kind of led me to some thoughts about trying something new, you know, switching up what I was doing, get, get my feeling for the game back and, and whatnot. So it started with that I got on loan to BKV and Otelia in uh, fourth division Sweden, where I played the, the second half of the season. And that's kind of where uh, where I got in contact with Karl Kolevesh, uh, as you say. And... Um, we started looking at teams and you know what was possible when I could go to the U.S. and and pretty quickly that summer, uh, leading up to the fall, um, I felt like this is what I want to do. This is let let's do it. it. It felt like it was something exciting. It was something new, and at that time it wasn't it wasn't that many um, that many Swedes that had done it before, and not as today you see. I don't know hundreds of uh, of uh, Europeans going going to the U.S. But at at that time, it, it was really something uh, something different, something exciting, and and I said, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. And in in January, I ended up uh, ended up leaving. Yeah, because you you started the process in the summer and you had graduated, and then you know mm-hmm. some some of the players that we helped, they they end up. They they want to play a full season uh, and then then go go to the US and you know the fall season in the US that is the main season uh, and and so so a lot of the coaches they do recruit for the most part for the start of their season so that you normally would go in August but you obviously ended up going in January and I I think that is for many a, a good idea to do that because then you get a whole semester where you you you. You get into a um, a new place, new teammates, new language for us Scandinavians, uh, mm-hmm. and then you maybe get settled in a bit better. And I, Definitely. by the looks of it, it, it worked out very well for you. That yeah, yeah, no, it's it's definitely wherever you go, uh, whether it's a new team or a new city, and especially if it's a new country with a new language, I think there is a. Um, uh, there's there's a certain amount of time that you need to kind of kind of get comfortable in um, in your role and you know find who you are when you speak a different language with it which is actually very difficult and um, to anyone that are consi- is considering going there in in January I would say do it because it gives you it gives you the right amount of time to figure out the studies and how how things are done at college you you get to know your teammates a little bit better you get to 
work on your language, obviously. So th there's a lot of things that get thrown at you at once once you once you arrive in the U.S. Um, and um, and I think that those four months, this first semester, kind of gives you gives you a little time to adapt. And then once the season comes, you already feel like you know you know what you're doing and you know the coach and and whatnot. So. If if anyone has the possibility to to go in January, I would I would definitely say to them that they that they should. Yeah, because it's uh, the spring is a bit more developmental. You do play scrimmage games, of course they don't count mm -hmm. uh, in the grand scheme of things, but it's more uh, a way to test different positions and and work on technical stuff. And uh, it, it is certainly a smoother transition into getting to know your teammates rather than a very mm -hmm hard and, and short preseason mm -hmm. uh in in august where you have to you know let's say 25 percent of the team they are brand new it's hard to get mm -hmm. let's say seven or eight players just straight into a team and understand the way you're supposed to play uh, right away so i think that's uh that the spring is, is a good thing for for getting more used to that uh, but you yeah you you were contracted uh, i mean still w within the amateur definition of the NCAA, uh, but, but you played a high level in sweden and uh we, we of course knew that we and i remember you know carl and i spoke to carl about your case and he he, he remembers back that, of course, we were looking for top, top NCAA Division One soccer for, for you. Mm -hmm. That was undoubtedly where you should fit in. And and in the end, Creighton is that. I mean, it is, a, I would say, a pretty legendary school in, in NCAA mm -hmm. Division One history. Um, but but you had some other options. But why did you end up choosing Creighton? Yeah, it, it was. it's funny. I was, uh, I was looking at the ranking at the time, the NCAA ranking at the time. And Creighton was, I don't know, twentieth. And I was, I was also in, in contact with uh, uh, University of Louisville, who was uh, top five, I think, um, and the University of Washington, UW, who also historically is an amazing school. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't actually pay much attention to Creighton itself until they said that they are gonna send someone, someone over and uh, watch a game. A game of mine. It was a a cup game that we played with the with the team where I was loaned out. So the the goalie coach from Creighton flew over, um, flew over for just two days, watched the game, and told me after the game, he told me, uh, Coach Bolovich, the coach at the time, uh, wants to offer you this and this kind of scholarship. So so here you have it. If you want to come to Creighton, you can. So it was kind of it was the uh, effort that they put in to to recruit me that kind of stood out um, and made and and made me say <laughs> what else can you ask for this is uh, this is top top of the top so that kind of that kind of got me for for Creighton. It is a big commitment to do that and that is also because you were recruited during the fall they they also had that their season. Mm -hmm. You know, and they play that season probably twenty to twenty-two games, I imagine, because they did well. Uh, that they send out one of their coaching staff to, to all the way to Sweden, because Nebraska is quite far from from Sweden. Uh, yeah, it's far from everything. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but that they did that, it, it's that means you you are very important to them, and of course you had a good game. Because it was not just about showing them that you they they, they wanted you. That was. Uh, mm -hmm. They showed that, uh, but they also wanted to see that you were the right fit for their team, and so th yeah. there there has to be a um, you you have to also deliver in those circumstances, and and you did because mm -hmm. you, you were a very good player, and I uh, I think the uh, coach Bolovic, uh, who was a legendary coach in in the game, um, he he has a great history of getting players to the pros, and you you mm -hmm. they only recruit players that want to make it to the pros at that type of program uh, right, and you right. also had the hunger for that so in, in the end it worked out very well yeah you could uh, sort of look at it the college level and see the professionalism you know sending one of their coaches to go watch a Swedish player to recruit him hopefully mm -hmm. for next season 
I think there's a lot of and the, and the resources they have as well. They're yeah, they have some resources that that not many clubs in the in the world have. So it's how how is that impressive. a difference from let's say a super etan team in Sweden? Uh, when you when you came over to Creighton and, and saw the the fields, the the facilities for rehab for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they have all sorts of stuff that we we we're not used to having those things. Uh, I mean, we right, have a soccer right. pitch, but uh, and that could be a good one, but not not maybe the surrounding <laughs> stuff. Uh huh. Unbelievable, honestly. It was. I um I've had seen some some pictures and you know some some uh, virtual tours of of the school before, but once you get there and you see they have hot bath and ice bath, they have. They have a treadmill under underneath the pool, and they have they have a gym like no other, and they have this. Obviously, Crane has a has a really nice stadium as well, and a locker room, top notch. It it makes it a lot more fun, but it had it's also made me realize in afterhand how how you started to take these things for granted once once I moved out of college and and into the professional football that these things are not something that every team at a professional level has it is it is pretty fortunate for someone to have these these facilities for for four years or three years or whatever it is yeah it is the the amount of money they put in for the student athlete well-being and and you know but we're talking high level soccer here i mean how would you compare uh, let's say you're the first team at Eco Sirius when you came over and you saw how the first game you played for Creighton. How how, how would mm-hmm. you compare those two teams? Um, if if you uh, probably different styles, but uh, mm-hmm. what was what's your take on that? It, it's definitely it's definitely different, and um, the college game, you know, it hasn't really the same even the same rules as as football all over the world. So it's kind of, you know, with free substitutions all the time, it kind of keeps that tempo all the time. It's, it's kind of like a continuous counter attack in college. Um, while in, in other places in the world, it's more of a, of a tempo. It has, it has a rhythm, the game. And um, it, it takes, it, it takes a lot of good physical conditions to, to do well in the college game. However, the the individual quality, I'd say, is still higher. Was still higher at the Eco Series than I was in in second division that I was in in uh, at Creighton. I I would if I if I would um, compare the two, I'd probably say that that Creighton's Creighton's football, which was pretty much the top of NCAA would land somewhere between the bottom of the Super and second division Sweden and the top of, of the third division back home. Yeah. And that's uh it's always interesting to ask people that question because you and, and a lot of the times it's the same thing with the with the intensity of the game. Uh and but I think in order to make it in the pro world you have to be at, at right now the the physicality of it i think the college game sets you up very nicely for that uh, mm-hmm. you know i mean in college there's a lot of strong fast physical players and you need to be able to deal with that uh, uh, if you're going to make it as a pro but i mean a lot of the swedes norwegians danes we've helped that have done very well in college including yourself i mean it's not like they are ridiculously fast or ridiculously mm-hmm. strong you know but the, but they added something maybe different to uh to their team that made them very good players mm. uh, but you were if you look at your four full seasons you pretty much started every single game uh, i mean you you played more than 80 games in your college career i mean that's mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. numbers typically i mean i you know i played four years of college i was not even close to reaching 80 games uh, so that's mm-hmm. one you've played in you featured in every single game and two your team has done incredibly well in those four years if you look at those those stats and no injuries also yeah. no injuries no injuries no that's um i think i started every one by one where i had some type of a little a little injury but i could still get subbed on but yeah it's 
pretty much I, I would say it's 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 thanks to the the resources that you that you have over there uh, and the and the support that I, I was able to maybe look at myself and see what what I hadn't done so well in the past and say that or right, maybe you you need to take care of your body a little bit more and and do a little bit more strengthening work because I can't say I, I was a very physical player when I when I arrived in the US and I and I usually had, you know, some some small injuries that were bothering me and stuff. But with the help of the resources and, and the facilities, I, I think that it kind of made me realize you have everything that you need here and, and it's if you wanna out of a physical standpoint do well, it's it's only up to you. But you you had a great start to your college career, maybe because of your January to to May semester where it was you you got used to things. But when the when the action counted in the fall, you ended up being on the all freshman team in uh, in, in the Big East. And when we talk Big East, that is one of the absolute best conferences in NCAA mm-hmm. Division One. It's uh, so you were one of the. Out of the newcomers in that league, you were in the top eleven. Uh, that must have been quite nice to get recognition right away. Yeah, absolutely. It was. We had a we had a really good team that year, and uh, a team that we got to keep from the spring into the fall. So it, it had a lot to do with that. That I that I actually did come in the spring, because a lot of the freshmen who also were very very talented, but that came in the fall. They had a, you know, they had a hard time of. Uh, adapting and kind of finding their own place so no we had a we had, it was mostly because we had a really good team and i found my i found my role in an effective way in that team and and also had the the support from the coach he he, he wanted to play me so i i played every single game and if you then look at your progression uh, for for the season number two, season number three, and, and ultimately your last year and you know, the fourth season, where you end up being the midfielder of the year in in the Big East Conference, uh, which is that that is a good sign for uh, for for a, for a, for a draft or a combine, mm-hmm. you know, and you, you, your your name is out there, you know, that is a sign of you performed well and an incredible achievement. But how how did you get from you know from from being a freshman? A freshman team selection all the way to one of the absolute best players out of all of them in, in that uh, league which also means in in the whole of NCAA division one mm-hmm. soccer mm-hmm. it was a, it wasn't it wasn't a straight a straight journey at all in any kind of sense uh, we kind of creating we went we went on a on a on a losing streak kind of uh, after my sophomore year my sophomore year we still did very well, and then my junior year was actually one of the worst um, seasons in Crane's history. I, I I believe we didn't go to the NCAA tournament, and um, and that kind of switched uh, switched it a little bit for us. Me and and uh, Mitch is his name. He was the other captain. We kind of decided that that it, it can't happen again, and. And we kind of looked at ourselves, and we and really took on the team um, as captains, and we put on a lot, put down a lot of work together with the coaches on on how we would play tactical all, all the way until the um, into the weight room, and it was a it was a journey we did together, and we worked really hard to to finally get there, and then I think that's also that's a reason why why I could also do so well and flourish in my last season and, and get the, the awards and 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 all to it. And it is a, a big thing to be named a team captain. I mean in your we, we can see that several players from that are not American end up getting the captain's armband and uh, how, how do you see the difference between because you play with several international players at Creighton? It's mm-hmm. a good mix of um, good American players and, and good internationals like yourself. How, how do you feel the the internationals contribute? Is that di- more differently to how Americans are in the locker room? I mean, there's a mix of cultures there. Yeah, hey, it definitely. Is. Well, first of all, um, 
we internationals we usually we usually arrive a little bit older than the americans that's the truth that we you know they have just finished high school which they do earlier i believe the americans so they come in at 17 18 while we can come in at 19 so we already kind of have that we're a little bit mature we're a little bit more ready for the game um both both as a person and, and as a player so I think I would I would believe that that's the reason that that you see a lot of internationals being the captain is that they have a little bit of of more maturity to them than than the Americans do. Yeah. But you, um, it, it takes. Uh, I mean, because coaches. I mean, he flew to Sweden to find one ingredient for his team, and it ended up being a very good ingredient. And they will do the same thing in 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 the U.S. They might go to South America. They might go to England. They might mm-hmm. go to uh, anywhere, really, as long as they feel that hey, here we have someone that can come in and contribute, which is quite a special thing uh, <laughs> to, that makes high-end Division One soccer such an exciting arena to to watch and to and to to play in of course mm. um and i you had the same tools with uh, although it was a lower level than the high end division 1 level i also i played you know at the division 2 school we ended up transitioning into division 1 so i played one year in division 1 and and it was all that mix of uh, different styles of play yeah, that extreme. was a lot of fun to be part of yeah definitely mm-hmm. I, I was not used to, um, so I went to two different schools and the first school that I went to, they played sort of my type of, or what I grew up playing, you know, a lot of possession and we were sort of the different team in that conference and we ended up going to the, you know, winning the league, winning our conference and, and winning everything. And then uh, the next year where I, when I transferred, I went to a team that were only playing counter attacks. So <laughs> our midfielders didn't touch the ball. It was from our center backs and up to our wingers. And luckily for me, I played a winger, so I, I got to touch the ball a couple of times. But I don't think our midfielders touched the ball more than, than 15 times during a game, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's not enough for yeah, a you, midfielder. You do see, you, you do see though, the Americans have some some different qualities than we do. Like you, like you said before, they're usually a little bit more physical, a little bit faster. So if you have a... If you have a big majority of Americans in your team, you're probably going to play a little bit more like that. Yeah. You're going to skip the midfield, probably. <laughs> How um, you talked about the freshman season being a phenomenal season. I mean, you won 19 games. You lost in the quarterfinal of the national tournament mm-hmm. against Akron, who's always a very good team, a powerhouse. Uh, is is that your your highlight in as a team to to get to a quarterfinal? Of course, losing there is that is uh, that sucks. But uh, it's the, a the whole memory. <laughs> yeah, so let's not talk about that. But but the whole um, well, what is your best memory? Is that uh, that season must be up there as one of the best you've ever been part of? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, like I said, we had we had an incredible team. We had. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, we had uh, Fabian Herbers, who's in in uh, playing at Chicago right now in in MLS. Who did, I don't know. I think he scored 15 goals and had 17 assists or some something along those ways. Um, and we had a lot of, of great players, a lot of them who went on to play professional as well. So, it, we just rolled on win after win, and it, unfortunately, I almost say that it's the best football memory that season yeah that, because it, it was uh, you, you want to kind of progress but yeah. there, it's <laughs> right, hard to right, top right. a season like that you almost almost have to win the whole the whole thing yeah mm-hmm. right. you, you talk about uh your teammate that is now at chicago uh he's a german right uh and he mm-hmm. had a lot of assists but you also had a lot of assists during your time at creighton uh, you 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 were uh, like a waiter for your other, uh, just dish, dishing up good uh, good crosses to for other the forwards to, to to tap in right. Yeah, yeah, I had I had a a good amount of assists. I I think I I don't know I don't remember the number exactly, but from my sophomore on until until my 
16 year i was on pretty much all the set pieces so i had a couple of tries to get some, get some <laughs> yeah. assistance. it helped it helps to yeah. take the corner kicks i yeah. think i actually right. have right. The, the count i think it was seven goals and 23 assists if that's not wrong but 23 assists is pretty solid yeah that's very good yeah but you um Talk to us a little bit about ne- Omaha, Nebraska, because that's, um, I, I think I've seen a film with G- George Clooney when he's uh, traveling around the U.S. His base is in Omaha, Nebraska, and that that's pretty much what I, I've never been there. Would love to go up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ha- how is how is that? Where, where where is it for the ones that don't have a map in front of them? Well, it's, it's right in the middle of America, I'd say. A little bit in the north. I'd say Kansas probably is is the central the central point of of the of the states and just the north of that. And I'd say it's in terms of its climate, it's pretty similar to to Sweden or to Norway. It's it's a little bit more extreme. It gets really hot in the summer and then gets really cold uh, in the winter. Um, but as a city, I actually I actually love Omaha. I I miss it a lot. It's a it's a very familiar city with the it has a little part of of it called the the old town with a bunch of restaurants and and bars for those who are interested and uh, and um, a lot a lot of a lot of nice things and cool things but it takes it takes some years to to get to know the city for the first couple of months i was there i could not i could not find many many positives with the city but as you Kind of get to know people, and they show you around. It has it has a lot of good spots, so I I actually miss miss it. Because you, I think it's a lot about uh, many people that we've spoken about. It's it's a lot about the people that you meet, and and of course your experience in the classroom and and uh, on, on the soccer pitch. And in your case, it's it's important for to be happy there. But it's uh, mm-hmm. there's so many. I think a lot of people think just about New York City, uh, L.A. And Florida, that's like that's the U.S. But here you're talking, you're in the middle of the country, and uh, there's so many amazing places. Uh, and, and here you have Creighton; it's a, it's quite a big school. So there's a lot of students, mm-hmm. and there's so many things. I think people might be afraid of that they're going to run out of things to do, which I think is so far from the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it's you can, as a college student, almost anywhere you will never run out of things to do, especially when you're a student athlete and you you have so many commitments with your sport. Right, right. Yeah, I, I don't think that should be the fear of anyone that they're going to run out of things at a, at a university. <laughs> yeah, there'd be lots of things to do. Yeah, and you don't really have that much time to, let's say you were not in a big city. I mean, and Omaha is a decent sized city. I mean, we're not talking uh, for us Scandinavians. It's it's actually a lot of people in that city. How, how mm-hmm. many, you remember roughly the numbers? I, no, I, I don't want to say, but it's, it's around maybe two hundred to three hundred thousand people in the in the inner inner area. Yeah, and if you then add like the metropolitan, like the, the outskirts, it's it's a big city for us it's that are not city. used to yeah, sure. <laughs> used to that. We're, we don't have that many people living in, in our countries, and but in like U.S. terms, it's it's not a huge city, but it's a decent sized mm-hmm. city. Um, but but did you have? fun outside of the the you know you played a lot of soccer obviously but did you get to do some other stuff with with friends and uh, and hang out and, and travel a bit travel um yeah we did actually no throughout my four years we had a lot of a lot of good good memories and we got to go places during the fall season obviously you don't i mean you you get to go places but all you see is is the hotel room pretty much you don't have time to explore but in the spring and in the summer there's a lot of opportunities to go see uh, places i've gone to vale in colorado with a couple of friends i've been to florida one spring break and i lived in oregon uh, two summers uh, playing pdl over there and oregon is an amazing place amazing place so I definitely, I definitely got to see places. You, if we had away games in New York City as well, where we got to go and see, you know, the big tourist attraction, the big uh, Times Square, and and all those kind of things. So, 
you definitely get to see it. you if you try you will definitely get to see the country no matter if you're in nebraska or south dakota or wherever <laughs> wherever you are yeah but the big east conference i mean you're in nebraska but you mentioned you you play against for instance st john's in in mm-hmm. queens in new york city that is quite far right. away you play a lot of games where you of course you fly there and it, but it's more like a business trip but uh, and you get to see play some amazing schools and and see campuses etc but it's more like yeah we're going to go here get the three points and then get get back right right and if you get the three points you might be able to sneak out But <laughs> yeah. if you don't if you don't if it's you don't, hotel room yeah. yeah yeah cool and then uh you of course graduation was in december for you since you started in in january mm-hmm. and you got that uh, ended your four year cycle uh, after after a phenomenal last season and that is a good timing because then we're talking combine which is the where where you go on pretty much trial and showcase yourself in front of the MLS clubs and then leading up to the to the MLS draft in in 2019. Yep. Great. Mm-hmm. So you you get your diploma, your bachelor in business, uh but your eye is now on the the MLS draft. Uh you've been invited to the MLS combine. Um, mm-hmm. which is the showcase uh, and, and you get to pretty much all the MLS clubs, the decision makers, they watch the best college players uh, and, and it is a very good window to, if you perform well there and you've done well in college, your chances are quite good for being picked in the in the draft in January. How how was the combine for you? It was... Um it it was a very good setup it, it was a it was a good experience but also it's hard to hard to really enjoy it. it's really stressful there's coaches everywhere there are interviews every day you have 50 other players telling them what their agents and clubs are telling them it's a it's a big mess honestly um it's a lot to go through in in just a short amount of time and then you have then you have two games uh where you where you have to show basically who you are um so it's a, it's a lot to take in and and i i would think that there are probably more effective ways to pick out the best players than a, than to do a, a showcase but but it, it was a fun experience it was a really fun experience to to meet all the other college players and and you you know get to be there for for five or six days because uh, here you get to you know that, that many all the ones that play you know to to make it professional they they desperately want to get an invite to the MLS combine and that is not mm-hmm. an easy ticket to get you have to have performed very well and and you know you have people working in the background of, of course for you on that um and then it's about taking the opportunity when you're And, and delivering when you when you need to, mm-hmm. uh, and coming off your season there, I think that, that you, you were uh, with confidence, and you you, you went to Florida and and, and, and did well. Um, and then Christmas came, and then we were getting ready for the MLS draft in Chicago, and we brought a lot of our team members over for that. It's always fun uh, to to go to these things, and uh, of course. With big hopes for that, you and and a couple mm-hmm. others that we that we had helped to college that have gone gone the same route as you were going to be picked. Um, and to, how how was draft day for you? Do you wake up and you're today is the day I'm going to get picked? How how is that? Yeah, it was uh, as I remember it. Uh, I was in Chicago with with at that at the time my girlfriend, today my wife. Um, we were there together. And it was it was honestly nerve wracking. It's a, it's a scenario when you know in in this uh, this day you're gonna find out where you're going, what's gonna happen, and and if you don't get picked, what happens, and what are you gonna do? So it was a lot of a lot of question marks and and you know and a lot of doubt. And I had decided that if I don't go in the first or second round which I expected to, uh, I'll, I'll go home to Sweden. If I go in the third on, or the fourth, I'll go home to Sweden and, and, um, and do the, do preseason with a super Athlete team there and kind of, you know, and put, put the U S in, 
in in the backpack and move on and and uh, that was also a layer of stress that i wasn't sure how to handle really so you know we we're sitting there and it's it's a long process it's a long process with with the picks and their speeches and there's a clock in between every every pick and <laughs> and what so so you know you sit there with with the the friends you made from the combine and and one after one they kind of get picked they get to say their things and and I think I think I get, got picked 44th if I don't yeah, remember yeah, it wrong yeah 44th so it wasn't overall. it wasn't that too too many players left next to me when I got picked so it was it was a it's a big relief honestly yeah I'm a, it's like uh, you're sitting there at an Oscars uh, Academy Awards and you uh, have to wait for your category and then you have to see if you actually get picked and out of the envelope comes, okay, you are read strong number 44, picked by Seattle Sounders, right? And it was, uh, uh-huh. w- it, we were thrilled at that point because we were, you know, working with... Uh, with, with with Jerome uh, that that was working in the background on this and uh, mm-hmm. the agent that was or, or agency that were helping with with this uh, uh, th- did a very good job in in uh, of course one thing is that they y- you've done your work then it's up to someone else to to actually do the work in the background and, and put put you on their radar pretty much uh, which right. I, and you, yeah. I, I know he did a very good job with that and. Um, but then to actually be called because you, you're an international player, it's not you know there, if you would have been an American, it's a little bit different because there's some quotas on how many internationals they can have on each team, etc. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, that you went in the second round, forty uh, fourth overall. It's a fantastic achievement, uh, and Seattle Sounders, nice nice part of the country too. Uh, very very, ni- nice, very yeah. nice club to to get the opportunity to to earn a contract with. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was, um, but but I agree with you. The the whole spectacle of a draft it takes many hours, and they uh, you know especially when the clubs they they have a five minute clock that they have to make their decision from after the the, the the former pick and then m- they might call a timeout which means oh then you have to wait for another three minutes and it, it gets it takes a w- it takes a while but it is then mm-hmm. extra nice when your name is called uh, we were so happy <laughs> right, right. Um, right but but then you there was celebration that that night for sure uh, but then you have to get to work you have to to show Seattle that you I'm good enough to play play with you, the big boys in the MLS. How was preseason? Uh, yeah, it's like you say. It's uh, it doesn't necessarily mean anything that you get that you get drafted. Other than that, maybe you know they they find you interesting in one way or another. So after after the draft, I think just a couple of days later, uh, preseason starts, and I headed to Seattle, and we had a couple of training sessions there. And then uh, we were off to every MLS team has two two preseason trips, so we were off to uh, I can't remember where in California, but a beautiful place in California, and we spent ten days there uh, playing some games and training, and it's it's really hard preseason, really hard, and um, and then back to Seattle a couple of days, and then on another trip uh, down to to Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, where we did the same thing. Then there were a little bit more games and and um, and stuff. So it, it's it's uh, it's definitely <laughs> a step up from from co- from the college level, without a doubt. It's it's you know it's full on. It's it's high speed. It's high quality. And Seattle, especially as a as a team like like we see today, you know, like no other in the MLS. So. It, it was it was fortunate for sure to get to experience experience these players and the level and they also have a coaching staff which is incredible with with um, Jimmy Traoria who's won the Champions League and and gone so he's, he's played for the Mexican national team so it, it was I was definitely fortunate to to get to be there in that team who has so many good players and good people around it however. It makes the 
the objective of of the whole thing a lot harder. Yeah. It's a lot harder to to get a contract in 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 that Seattle. But I think you, of course, you to be drafted means that hey, you you've really delivered and you you're gonna be a pro one way or the other. I mean, the hope is that yes, I I will make that transition into an MLS team and earn my spot right away. But I think it's also the the way the MLS has become now. It's it's a very good league and it is. Uh, very tricky to right away out of college come in and be expected to 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 just play in in the MLS. Some do it, yes, but a lot of the the teams they also need you to play maybe one season in the USL Championship and and mm-hmm. and and play in the pro game and get used to that. And of course, you have to perform there, and then that's when you can kind of show that yes, um, he is definitely mls material and can contribute right away and Mm -hmm. so so but that was kind of what happened with you with with the tacoma being the team that you ended up playing for because did what was the feedback that you got from from the the sounders first team after after going through the the preseason and the tours well it was pretty much that we would like to sign you but but you're you're international uh, at the time, I think they had two international spots open, which they had planned to bring into two signings in the summer. So it was kind of, it, it was impossible. It was impossible for me to sign. So, so I decided uh, to sign then with Tacoma, like you say, um, and kind of hoping that I would do it uh, so well that the upcoming season, the next season, I'd have a chance on on getting into the Sounders roster. Yeah. So, but I, I I also I agree with you. The the MLS is kind of outgrowing the the process of the MLS draft. That they don't really benefit any anymore from from drafting college players because they they're aware of the fact that they've grown and like MLS has gotten so much better and college is kind of staying at at its at its level and. Um, but however, you should not underestimate USL. It's a, also a very good league, and I think a lot of internationals, especially as I hear as and as I talk to them, kind of underestimate USL. You know, you you came to college to to get to play in the MLS, but it's the same. It, it's such a high level league today that you know it, it can, can almost uh, compare itself to. Maybe not the top five, but definitely put itself in the top ten in the world. So, so I think that, which also makes USL by itself uh, a better league because the players that used to play in MLS, they kind of get um, forced down to play in the USL. So, and and that's what I experienced as well. I didn't necessarily love the fact that I was going to to the USL. But as I as I started playing there, I realized this is this is a very good league as well, yeah. and a very fun league to play with. You play against a lot of uh, players that played high up in Europe or yeah. played in MLS, and it, it's a it's a good league. I I really enjoyed uh, the USL. Yeah, there's a reason why Joe Cole and Didier Drogba has played in the USL. It is mm-hmm. it is a very good league, and I think. Uh, one of our colleagues here, we, we've often had this talk about how good the MLS is. And because <clears throat> when we usually talk to, you know, potential clients that are thinking about it, they say, all right, maybe MLS is, you know, could be in, in reach. But the MLS is a lot better than the Norwegian top division again because it's, it's mm-hmm. grown so fast and it, there's a lot of good players in the MLS right now. If you watch an MLS game, the tempo is, is pretty insane compared to watching a Norwegian game here, for example. It is. And it's... Uh, I, I like what you, how you... The rationale there, you all, with... You know, the MLS becomes better, so of course the leagues below the MLS, which are still professional leagues, they also become mm-hmm. much, much better. I mean, that's part of the development. And you, you, you see a lot of the the good college players that get drafted end up playing, let's say, for a USL championship team and do well, and then they come back to the MLS, and then they'll actually start becoming very good players, and they might get national team call-ups. There's many, many examples of that uh, in, in recent years. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Um, so, so it is. Um, I think it's. It used to be that yeah, because it's an MLS draft. Of course, you're gonna aim for MLS because that's the name of this draft. But it it might be mm-hmm. that you uh, eventually you'll end up in MLS. But that is you'll have you have to be extremely good. Um, and I think also with the college game now is, I think more and more players from Europe and other places in the world. I think they're more open to going the college route and play elite college soccer because it's mm-hmm. uh, it is a great way to continue developing. You talked about the resources, the uh, everything around it, and and you develop a lot during those four years. Of course, you can kind of get paid with with your scholarship and and get an education, which you'll eventually you'll need that. Um, so I think. Um, in terms of internationals making decisions to come into college, I think those players are better than they used to be. You know, like when you went mm-hmm. in, in uh, now it's it's a while back, but if you look at the ones going, uh, coming up now or maybe last year, it, it is some super talented players that could play professionally here, but they end up going to college because they're more intrigued with that with that route or journey. Uh, so, right, right. And that's kind of one of the advantages advantages that the college has over over whether it's second division Norway or or Sweden that you know the the level might be very similar but in college you get a degree you get an experience like nothing else and and you get all the, these resources and facilities so you you get prepared for you know the next the next stage in your life whenever that comes so I I, I think. I think that's a good thing that you say that that the level the level is high because it's it's good that people decide to take that route instead of maybe staying in their home country playing second division until they figure out that maybe I'm not gonna reach first division and then then you know then you then you don't have that degree and that experience that you get from college. Well, exactly, but you're. You ended up coming back to Europe uh, after you, 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 your road uh, or your journey didn't continue to the MLS, but you, you now you're in Spain, uh, mm-hmm. and that is another adventure. You're playing professionally in Spain right now. Uh, were you? Was that another chapter you wanted to write and, and do something different? Were you kind of done with the US, or what, what was the rationale behind the? Kind of leaving the U.S. behind for at least for now. Yeah, yeah, at least for now. Well, it was a it was a combination of, of a lot of things, but um, it was first and foremost it, it was the situation that w- that I was in in uh, in Tacoma. Uh, there was a it, there was a lot of things that I didn't see. I didn't see a future in in my situation there, so I kind of. Um, started to look out and ask people about what possibilities there were in in Europe and at the time I was a little frustrated with the fact I was with the with the second team of Seattle uh, and so the the focus wasn't necessarily on winning it was more on uh, growing and you know fostering uh, players for the first team so we ended up losing a lot of games and and in the USL, that doesn't matter because you can't get relegated, and you neither can you get promoted. So I felt like it was time to play real competitive football, and um, and this opportunity in in Spain came up, and and it, <laughs> we didn't have much time to to consider consider the the offer. So uh, me and my wife we took it and we flew to Spain, leaving pretty much pretty much our whole life except for a couple of soup, uh, suitcases um, behind and and we've been here we've been here now a year a year and four months yeah. it sounds like you're chasing uh, that dream and getting these experiences that is uh, I, I why not when you can do it and especially right, when you get right. your wife along along with you to do it with you it's uh, it's even better. Uh, but how, how? Tell us about the, the team and the level, and and how is your day right now? So the team is called San Roque de Lepe. Uh, we are we're located south of Sevilla, so we're literally we're we're on the beach, 
I live literally on the beach. It's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place. I had no idea about this when I when I went. So we were uh, gladly shocked when we arrived to see to see the place. And we're currently in fourth division Spain, which also is um, surprisingly high level. I would probably say it's without. <laughs> you can't quote me on it, but it's probably like second division Sweden. I'd say it's a it's a high level with a lot of a lot of uh, individually gifted players here in Spain. And at the moment we're we're doing really well. Last year we didn't do so well, and then the season got got cancelled because of the virus. Um, and uh, this year after seven games we're 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 tying first place so it's it's been it's been a really good time in spain it's i i love it here that's great and your contract you you have another uh year and a half on your contract and maybe it's too time to too early to tell what you're going to do with time but you you're going to continue your 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 soccer career uh, until your body says no or what do you have have you thought about that or are you just playing it a bit by ear? I'm playing a little bit by ear, but no, I wanna I wanna continue. Um, there's I'm I'm open to anything, but I would like to stay in Spain for for a while, uh, get to know the country better, and, and maybe see see other places than than just the south. So, but you know, we'll see we'll see what happens with this year, how it's going. Hopefully, we get promoted and. Then it's a complete different story, um, but we'll we'll play a little bit by ear and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's fun to see the the pattern uh, with you, Ewan. Uh, obviously, not really getting the chance in Sweden, and then taking the leap and going to college, and then doing really really well in college, and then getting drafted, and then. At Tacoma, it was more like a development team than it was really a team that was going to go and win. So you sort of get a bit tired of that not being competitive enough. And then you go to Spain, and then you do really well in Spain. And now there's a new chapter, right? It's, right so it's right. fun. It's fun to see that pattern, and 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 it's cool to see that you're you're enjoying football uh, at the moment in in Spain. Right. I think I think it's. Uh... I think it's important to remember that football can help you with so many more things than just, you know, than just getting to to the first first tier and, you know, making a, a bunch of money. Mm. It's it helped me to get a degree, learn English and now learn Spanish and being fluent in Spanish and, and being a, in a beautiful country. And it, it can it can really take you places that that. I hardly see any other job uh, being able to do. So I, I I think it's important for for people out there to remember that maybe it's not maybe maybe it's not all about you know making the most money and being in top division, but it can also give you a lot of things that you'll be grateful for in the moment, but also also once you put the put the shoes on the rack, like we're saying. <laughs> Scandinavia. Yeah. yeah, the good old shoes on the rack. Yeah, we will. I've, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. If you don't count my seven aside league as as playing, but uh, it's still fun. But uh, but you are. It's been a pleasure to to talk to you, and we're gonna continue following uh, your your progress and your little Spanish adventure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I think this uh, this episode uh, certainly inspired a lot of uh, a lot of people out there that are considering the u.s route as uh, as a way to become a professional and, and do what you love and i clearly what you've done uh, and in your back pocket you always have your bachelor's degree that you from a very good mm-hmm. university that you can you can use when the when the time is right for for uh, you know when when you put the shoes on the rack mm. <laughs> right right exactly thank you so much uh, Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.